What is up everyone, Munching Orange here and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield news video and today we've got quite a special one, something very unexpected. It seems like the beta for Pokemon Sword and Shield has leaked on the internet and it comes with a lot of information about the beta or prototype version of the games as in when they were still being worked on before release and there's a bunch of screenshots actually a guy was streaming it at some point like i said this came out of nowhere as most pokemon fans are right now hyped about the release of the crown tundra tomorrow and in case you didn't know somehow yes i will be covering the crown tundra as i have done for the isle of armor and the base sword and shield games so stay tuned tomorrow night i believe the crown tundra releases but as the title says today we're going to be talking about the pokemon sword and shield beta and if you guys are excited make sure to hit that like button because we're jumping right into it with the title screen this is probably the thing that's going to be most talked about because that is a whole lot of Pokemon that did not make it into the finalized Sword and Shield games, including Mega Rayquaza, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, definitely my favorite Legendary and Mega Evolution probably, and it is right there on the title screen, the first thing you see when you load the game. And I don't think this was ever meant to be the final version of the title screen. Like, I don't see why they would have legendaries and mega evolutions. I mean, Arceus, the god of Pokemon, is right there next to Bruxish, of all things. We got Moltres, who's soon to be in the Crown Tundra, at least in its new form. And one of my other favorite Pokemon, Meowstic, kind of doing the T-pose there. Or is it screaming out in pain? We all know Meowstic has seen some stuff. Actually, in the front and center is Greninja, though, who also didn't make it onto the final Sword and Shield game. And it's actually in a lot of these other beta screenshots, which again begs the question if every single Pokemon was originally intended to make it onto Sword and Shield, or if these guys are just here as a placeholder, because of course, before Sword and Shield, we had Sun and Moon, and that's where Greninja came from. So they could have used Sun and Moon as a base and slowly upgraded it to become Sword and Shield. And though the initial picture that leaked of the title screen on a switch might seem a little fake leak there was a whole live stream later on like I said and a bunch of other images that came out of this beta and as of now I definitely think it is legit but there could always be a chance in the future that it gets deconfirmed somehow but that'd be a lot of dang effort just to create a fake beta I guess it's happened in the past, but I'm gonna stick on the side of that this is definitely the actual beta or even alpha of Sword and Shield because this is very early stuff in the case of some of the routes. You can see there were pretty much no textures on some of the trees and buildings. They were just basic polygons with colors. But one thing that definitely stands out is that little Rotom map in the corner. And again, leads back to what I said about these games originally being a lot more like Sun and Moon. Because that is straight up the Rotom decks from Sun and Moon acting as a mini map in the corner, GTA style. Don't really know if that's all that necessary. I mean, in Sun and Moon, of course, we had the bottom screen where Rotom map or Rotom decks had a little map that could show you where you're supposed to go. And I guess it does help out like basically kids that have never played Pokemon or any video games before to get to where they're supposed to go easier or maybe kids that don't really read all the dialogue so they wouldn't notice where they're supposed to go and that could kind of pinpoint you like which direction you're going. This ended up not making it into the final version and although some people will say that that's kind of a bummer that the little Rotom minimap didn't make it, I feel like it wasn't really all that necessary. Like I never felt lost in Sword and Shield. If anything in the wild area, I liked the fact that it was more open and you could go out and explore. And it was always very clear, at least in the first time you go there, that you're supposed to head into Moto Stoke. So the little Rotom minimap is cool, but I don't really mind that it's gone in the final version. What I do mind is my boy Beedrill got cut straight up. I think in the final version, it's actually Butterfreeze instead. Maybe not in that exact location, but I know there's Butterfreeze in the first town. Instead, we had Beedrill, who, as we know, is not actually in the final Sword and Shield game. So there's definitely more fuel to the fire that every Pokemon was supposed to originally be in the game. And that's definitely one of the things that Pokemon fans were torn about when it came to the Gen 8 games. We can also see a Vanalux, which I'm gonna guess was just a placeholder for now. I don't know why that guy would have a Vanalux, but I mean, who am I to judge what Pokemon he ends up using, man? We also see the Beta Wooloo, which 
are literally just Sean the sheep. They had no texture yet. I've decided not to show any actual footage from the beta, just screenshots, because the guy that originally streamed it, like I said, his Twitch account is gone now, and almost all videos I've seen are slowly getting taken down. So we're gonna stick to just using screenshots, but you can definitely look out there on YouTube and maybe find it. If there is a video, I'll link it in the description, because I'm really curious if this beta Wooloo would roll around like the final version did, because they don't look quite as round. I'm gonna guess that at this point in the alpha or beta, the Gen 8 Pokemon weren't finalized yet, as we see later on some screenshots of the wild area, and all of the Pokemon that appear there are Pokemon from the previous generations. We even got Stackataka making an appearance for whatever reason. I miss the Ultra Beast though, man, and Mega Evolutions, which is definitely sad that those could have potentially been in the games, or maybe they were even in it at some point and they chose later on to scrap them, maybe because they didn't have enough time to fit everyone in there, or just the game wasn't able to handle that much data. I'm not an expert on game design here, so I don't know if having all the Pokemon in there would have like broken the game or made it super slow or what, but as we saw from the title screen picture, it said 2019, and I don't know if that means that this beta was in 2019. That would mean that they finalized the game in like, less than a year, which would definitely support the theories, or I guess it's not even theories, it's fact at this point that the development of Sword and Shield was a bit rushed, but it could just mean that that was like the release date and they already had it set, so they put it on the title screen there. Either way, this is definitely very early in development, or maybe somewhere in the middle of it before the Gen 8 Pokemon had been implemented, we already had camping so that was definitely going to be a feature in the games from the beginning. Camping and perhaps even the curry making, although that's not clear. But the camp was definitely in it from the very beginning. That was going to be one of the highlights or I guess new gimmick features of Sword and Shield. And maybe giant killer beach balls too. Although I'm pretty sure that's just the beta placeholder for a berry tree, but I would watch my back, man. That thing looks dangerous. I'm not going to go through and name each and every Pokemon that is here that didn't make it to the final game. One, because I'm not actually sure, and two, because that would be a lot of Pokemon that didn't make it. Of course, they are slowly adding more of them in with the DLC, which you can feel however you want about that. I've grown to kind of accept that this is just how Pokemon does its business now, you know, we might not get all the Pokemon, but with the DLC, we will eventually. And even though I might not fully embrace what seems like greedy business practices, I still love Pokemon and I wanna check out the new stuff that they make and how they continue to evolve the franchise. And this definitely shows a lot about how the development process of Sword and Shield went, and especially how if this was the state of the game in early 2019 and it ended up coming out in November, how rushed the developers must have been, or rather crunched in time to finalize their work, because this definitely looks very early here, in certain screenshots at least. We have like, pink T-posing gym trainers, the stadium being virtually empty, the Krusty Krab in Motostoke, I'll take mine with extra pickles please. And some of the menus as well in their prototype state, I gotta say the finalized version looks a whole lot better. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of how this looked, although I do like how the background blurs and like you can kind of still see your character and the environment in the back. So we got the standard stuff, Pokemon, bag, the camping feature, like I said, network. What I'm really curious about is this GB, as in like Game Boy? I don't know what that could have ended up being. And of course, we can also see the little Rotom decks in the corner, further proving that they did intend to keep the Rotom decks over from Sun and Moon in Sword and Shield. Of course, we know in the finalized version, it ended up turning into the Rotom phone, which I do like a bit more because it's just new and exciting and it doesn't interrupt you every two seconds telling you that personally, I'm glad the Rotom decks didn't make it in because the minimap again, like I said, doesn't seem all that useful and that dude was just more annoying than helpful in Sun and Moon. But we also have some assets from the Let's Go games, which were used as placeholder in the party menu at least. That is literally straight up taken from Let's Go. I'm assuming it's because they hadn't had the graphics done yet or the custom UI or new UI rather for Sword and Shield at the time. But one thing we do know is this was apparently the beta title screen for the Let's Go games. Definitely a bit rough. I mean, I 100% like 
the finalized version more with like the little Eevee or Pikachu running around and saying, waving hello as you load up into the game. This was just, I don't know, is she floating? This is probably the best part of the whole beta right here. We got the placeholder icons for the YCOM system, I think it was called. You know, when you interact with people online, you got battle with your friends or... Actually, I don't even know what Cyndaquil is doing. Is, is Clefable flipping us off here? That's not cool, man. We got Hoopa waving hello. Oh my god, poor Ditto is being stretched like silly putty or maybe squished. I actually, I don't know what's going on there, but these are definitely some cute drawings. Poor little Goomy's feeling down, but Pukumuku's there to cheer him up. Spoink seems to have a nice idea. Pikachu... You know, it's it's just Pikachu and Deoxys didn't even want to be here. There's a few other things to mention, like the fact that there's no salons or boutiques or pretty much any stores in Moto Stoke yet. I'm sure all of these were planned to be added eventually. It's just at this point in development, either they were focused on more important things, you know, like actually getting the Gen 8 Pokemon in there. But in my opinion, the saddest thing we missed out on with this beta is that glorious title screen. I don't know why it looks so realistic. The final version looks nowhere near as good compared to this one. And that's excluding the Pokemon in there. Like, I'm not even talking Mega Rayquaza as much as I loved it. My boy Yegdip, the God Arceus. No, I'm just talking straight up the grass and the stands and all that. Just looks so much more detailed than HD, I guess. Even the Pokemon models themselves seem to have a lot better shading just for the title screen here. And I just wonder why this roster of Pokemon was chosen for like the beta, I guess. It's clearly not the champions team or your own team like what happens in the final game, but could have just been a bunch of ragtag random Pokemon they chose to show off the new graphics or whatever. But one thing's for sure, Somebody needs to help out, my boy Meowstick. So let me know what you guys think of the Pokemon Sword and Shield beta. You think it's real or bogus? And are you still? I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone's still a little bit upset about the missing Pokemon, especially Mega Evolutions. That is still the number one feature I want to see return in either the DLC or some future game. And I guess to end off this video, I can talk a little bit about my original topic for today. I actually wanted to make a video before the Crown Tundra dropped talking about why I haven't discussed or talked about any of the leaks for the DLC on my channel this year or for pretty much all of Sword and Shield. I've only covered the official stuff put out by Pokemon and it's not because I'm being paid out by Pokemon or something. People always have these crazy theories, but I'm pretty sure no Poketuber as far as I know is getting paid to like promote the games or anything. Like we do this by choice. They got us handcuffed psychologically, man. It's much worse than you think, but it's been a really long time since I've gotten to experience a Pokemon game kind of like with the kid like wonder I used to have back in the day before the days of the internet and YouTube trailers pretty much exposing everything that a game has to offer before it's even out and I noticed a trend with X and Y and then Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire and also in Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon they basically released everything about the game before it had even come out like we knew every single Ultra Beast that was coming out back in Oras we knew about even the Delta episode before it was released and honestly, it kind of bummed me out that there was no surprise left when the game actually came out. If there's any surprises left in the Crown Tundra for us, I want them to be, you know, surprises. So I've tried to avoid all the leaks and I've basically gone off of Twitter for the last few days because it's really hard to avoid it. But I feel like we live in an age where not just with video games, but movies and other media, people tend to formulate their opinions on it before the actual product is even released. There's like this bias almost going into it. It happened with like Star Wars and Pokemon and a bunch of other franchises that I like where people basically already know or hate or love a game before it's even out. And I don't know, it's been a long time since I got to just experience something without having any outside influence or I guess having it pretty much spoiled. I feel that for video games, the experience is really in playing it yourself. And sure, it is fun to watch other people play it too. I mean, I do it. I go on Twitch and watch people play games all the time. But at least for Pokemon, because it is something that is so close to my heart in my childhood and I mean, in my career as well, I haven't had that childlike wonder, like I said, in a long time. And I sort of wanted to have that with Sword and Shield. 
And, I mean, it didn't end up being the Pokemon game that I dreamed of. But then we got the Isle of Armor, and that wasn't exactly what we hoped for either. So maybe the Crown Tundra is the one that at least I know it might not live up to the hype that a lot of people have. But I just want there to be something hidden in there, some kind of surprise that hasn't been revealed in the trailers yet. And I'm looking forward to it. So cheers to my inevitable disappointment.